Good morning, I'm Austin Peterson, and it's time to rise and freedom. Welcome to the Wake Up America show for our world premiere. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm delighted to have you here. First up on the show, a new era in Liberty Media. The Wake Up America show is live streaming from Jefferson City, Missouri, the heart of America, the heart of our country. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'm glad to have you here. Thank you so much to everyone who has helped to make today happen, especially to Stephanie Peterson. Uh, my beautiful wife, Scott Fawn, who has donated this space to us, uh, Camelia Peterson, who is going to be our debut guest, Jack Stocker, his friends, and so many others who have helped the launch of this program get off to a great start. We're glad to have all of your support. We'll be talking more about how you can support the show a little bit later. But first off, the Democratic Party declares war against half of the country. Joe Biden, in a strange speech, argues that Trump voters are semi-fascist. Camelia Peterson will join me here in just a few minutes to discuss that and many other things. Also, more young people want to be influencers than astronauts. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? And can you guess based on what kind of shirt I'm wearing today? I guess you'll have to tune in uh, later to find out more. Stephanie Peterson, my beautiful wife, also will be joining us. She is a therapist, not my therapist, although many people say that I need one. Stephanie will be joining us this morning to talk about a topic that I've discussed before, but more and more people are quiet quitting in the this economy. And this started out as some kind of a movement in the anti-work pro-communist labor, pro-labor movements online, but it's starting to get more popular. What does it mean to quiet quit your job? We'll discuss that as well as the potential impacts for the economy when Stephanie joins us this morning at 8.03 this morning. Also, because of her role as a counselor, we're going to talk a little bit about a, a disturbing trend in mental health amongst young people Suicide and depression are up. Now, this is a disturbing trend that had started to occur before the pandemic, but was accelerated, I believe, by many of the draconian policies that occurred over the last couple of years uh, with the COVID tyranny that we saw around the country. And number six, the final uh, topic we'll discuss this morning, a uh, Missouri legislator is pushing to legalize, speaking of mental health, pushing to legalize small amounts of magic mushrooms. Yes, the technical term is psilocybin. It's actually said to have been proven effective in possibly treating PTSD, all that and more on the Wake Up America show. But before we get started with the news, since it is the inaugural episode, I do want to say uh, thank you so very much to all of the sponsors who have decided to sign up to support the show on a monthly basis. We're very grateful. There are many people out there, some of who are, I'm sure, watching the show right now, who have signed up for a monthly donation or made a one-time donation to the show, people like Tony Allegra and and uh, John Mashurik, uh, so many wonderful people that have stepped up and signed up for a monthly pledge at wakeupamericashow.com, joining Peterson's Patriots for a $17.76 a month uh, pledge to support the show. We're super grateful to have that. And we also have many wonderful sponsors who have stepped up and you will see in the commercials today. These aren't just your regular corporate sponsors. These aren't your regular typical types of commercials that you'll see on your television set. These are people who believe in the message of liberty and are willing to put their hard-earned American dollar on the line to support liberty programming like that. I am truly grateful for all of the advertisers who stepped up and put their dollars on the line even before this show debuted and aired. Now, about the show itself. First off, who am I? If this is your first time watching any of our Liberty Media because you're seeing us on one of our streaming platforms, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on the Wake Up America show. I've been a Liberty activist for over a decade now. I got my start back in 2007 in New York City starting a Tea Party group that morphed into the Ron Paul Club. We were a merry band of freedom fighters that uh, were plucky, and we raised millions of dollars for Congressman Ron Paul's presidential run back in 2008. Uh, after that, I worked for the Libertarian Party at the Libertarian National Committee as their volunteer coordinator. I was one of their most successful recruiters back in 2008. I worked for the Atlas Media Foundation uh, in 2009 and from there moved on to take a job with Judge Andrew Napolitano 
as a, an associate producer for his show, Freedom Watch. Judge Andrew Napolitano and I are still good friends today. He's very excited for the launch of this program. He's supporting me all the way, and he will be joining us as a weekly guest, uh, as he has on previous broadcasts of mine, joining us every Wednesday uh, at 8 a.m. Central Time. You don't want to miss those segments. Great minds meeting and discussing. Uh, did I just call myself a great mind? <laughs> Oops. Uh, a great mind discussing some of the news topics of the day uh, from a point of view that you won't hear anywhere else. Um, thank you, Judge Andrew Napolitano, for all your moral support uh, over the years. We're grateful to have him as a good friend of the show. And of course, we'll have many of our uh, regular guests that we I would have on my other programs as well. Camelia Peterson will be joining me in studio here uh, in just a few minutes. Um, previous guests on programs that I have hosted, Edie, like Edie Vogel and many others, uh, fan favorites of the Cantina crew, shout out to the Cantina crew, uh, will be um, uh, joining us as well. Uh, this show will take a more national focus. Although we are in Missouri and we are in Jefferson City, we will be doing interviews with Missouri legislators and lawmakers and movers and shakers. We will, of course, be covering many more national issues. So the Wake Up America show is... Austin 2.0. It's definitely a big upgrade over any production that I've been involved with in the past. And I'm super grateful to all the people again who have helped make this happen. But the person who's making everything happen right now, the, like these camera switches, for example, is me. So I do want to ask you a favor. Please forgive any kind of technical mishaps or issues as we work out the bugs in the few weeks as we get this program started up. It is a highly technical maneuver. And the hope is, is that uh, if the show is successful, which we ex we hope and expect that it will be, then we will be able to hire more staff, bring on more Liberty lovers, uh, bring on a producer, and even move on to bigger and better production studios than the one that we have right now. Although we are super grateful to be at the Missouri Times building here uh, across the street from the Capitol. It's going to be a great show. The Wake Up America show is going to cover news from a perspective of economic freedom and personal liberty. But for those of you who are familiar, familiar with me, you know that I am never content with just being an ideologue and just repeating dogma. I'm always going to question authority and I'm always going to question common wisdom of any groups, even the groups that I've been a part of as a member of the Libertarian Party in the past and as a member of the Re Republican Party now. And as someone who is just a free thinker, I will never be able to fit into one tiny box. I will always question common knowledge, common wisdom, and I will always question tropes and um, you know myths and sacred cows of the day. So you can expect that the Wake Up America show will speak truth to power, but not everyone who is in power is necessarily in the government. Corrupt corporations will be called out, uh, just bad actors in their communities. We will cover the story. If it's big and if it's news, it will be on the Wake Up America show. I'm proud to host this program for you and to do so completely independent. This is the show that the mainstream media doesn't want you to watch. And I'll let you in. I'm actually, let's switch to the seat. Let me tell you a secret, Cam. All right. Here's a, here's a secret, something that you know people don't want you to know. They're scared of this show. They're already scared of this. I've been hearing the scuttlebutt, the rumors around town. And let me tell you something. They don't want me doing this. They don't want me competing for your attention and for your eyeballs. I've been hearing these whispers around town from people who are like, oh, what's Austin doing over there? People who have seen the studio are like, oh, what's going on over there? They don't want you watching this show. They want your eyes glued to the boob tube. They want you to pay attention to the stupid box. They say that that uh, television, radio is theater of the mind. Television is theater of the mindless. The Wake Up America show is for those who still have a brain and a heart. Because of course, even though I do derive all of my uh, views mostly from logic, I still believe that we should be compassionate and we should be loving and kind towards our fellow man, unless they're communists and they're not people anyway. Just kidding. Let's not get go down the path of dehumanization. So. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, to everyone for watching the Wake Up America show opening segment. When we get back after the commercial, we are going to have uh, my favorite guests, Camelia Peterson, on the program. And I hope that you will enjoy and watch these commercials because these are not your typical corporate sponsors. All of my commercials come from people who believe in me and believe in the message of liberty. We'll be back right after this. It's 
morning again in America. Our country is proud and strong and better. I like shooting things, but whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work, but when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing, the Templar knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first, however, and then order it online, and then it chooses you. The Templar knife comes in a variety of shapes. As a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for Liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire. Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com. That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. But whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work. But when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing. The Templar knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first. And welcome back to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. Looks like we had a little technical difficulty already. The commercials reset itself. Hopefully we'll be able to get those uh, bugs worked out soon. But thank you so much for tuning in to the Wake Up America show. You can always find us here at wakeupamericashow.com if we get canceled by social media or pulled down for whatever reason for having topics that are just too spicy, too spicy. Uh, Joining us now in studio is my good friend and not my relative in any way, uh, Camelia Peterson. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good, Good morning. So exciting. Yes, very <laughs> exciting. Glad to have you here, Camelia. It's a delight and a treasure. So thanks so much for getting up early and for coming in and for uh, for doing the program here. And um, boy, it's it's kind of uh, it's great to see a, a new era of liberty starting, isn't it? It is. This is great. I'm so excited that it's nationwide now and mm-hmm. we still get to do some Missouri stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes. this is, I, I love this. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a great format for us to be able to talk about the news of the day from, you know, uh, we can even say bad words if we want to. <laughs> 
However, but I do I was watching. Exactly. I was gonna say my dad is definitely watching. And so, you know, he would be he got really upset. I'll tell you a brief, quick little story. So my first ever television appearance was when I was in uh, New York City. I was on 2020 back in like, you know, the 2004 or whatever. It was for, it was like uh, interviews about like cell phone bills being crazy expensive. That was when people were just starting to get hit with like roaming charges. And I had like a thousand dollar bill for a month or whatever. So the producer, like I didn't know how television worked. The producer like ginned me up to say a bad word. They were like, would you say that you were this angry? They were, they were kind of like trying to script me almost in a way, you know? And so I remember I said, it's bull, whatever, bull, blank. And man, my dad was not happy about that. <laughs> he, he let me know, you know, cause I think grandma, maybe at the time grandma was watching or something like that. So it was kind of, oh, but anyways, we're going to try and keep it clean and stuff. PG to PG 13, if you will. So, yes. so, uh, we've got all kinds of great segments and, uh, content, uh, queued up for the show. I have, uh, a little bit of a new segment that we're going to brand here called Twitter weirdness. And in it, we're going to talk about some of the crazy things that happen on Twitter. I've got this clip that I want to play for you because, this is actually, I could totally believe this, but it's nice to sometimes to see cognitive dissonance playing out in real time. Let's play this clip, and then, Camelia, I'd like to have you react to it. Take a listen. Anything is justified in preventing them from taking office, is it? No, no. You know what's not justified? Using armed violence to try to kill people in the Capitol. That's not justified. Answer this question. Huh? Is it was it answer this question? Well, it was the it appropriate? The question is, was, was it press? appropriate to bury the Hunter Biden? You're talking about the press doing the, that? He's saying that's what they did. And that is what they did. They buried the Hunter Biden story before the election because they were like, we can't risk having the election thrown to Trump. We'll tell them after the election. Well, and, and we know for Watch a fact this. that that's what they did. Of course. You no, don't but follow I mean, this. Saying you you gotta... know for a fact that that's what they did. I don't know what they did. I know because you only watch MSNBC. No, that's not true. Well, then you would know about that. Got him. I do know about that. Got him. Do, I do know about that. And I do watch Fox. But the point no, you is. Don't. No, you don't. You, you, we're going to prove now that they, that they, that the, the press uh, play, you know, try to. They're admitting it. Yeah. They're, the that's press not is a, admitting it. Yes, that's not even an issue anymore. They're saying yes. Yeah, we basically did this because we didn't want this to throw the election. And then Amy Klobuchar yes. just sits there like, know. oh, I don't know that everybody is reporting that. Not, I guess not everybody's reporting it, Camelia. So that means if not everybody's reporting it, then that means it must not be true. huh? Well, I don't know where Rob Reiner's been under a rock or what. He just couldn't quite seem to believe that you know, they were actually admitting it. Dude, the Hunter Biden thing has just been getting worse and worse. And you got to know that there's got to be some level of corruption, the unheard of corruption that the president is trying to protect his son from the kind of FBI raid that they, they pushed on Mar-a-Lago, which did you see the latest news about the Mar-a-Lago stuff? No nuclear code, no nuclear stuff. First of all, I mean, I mean, is the president supposed to be responsible for all of that stuff? Aren't they supposed to have some guy handcuffed to a like a, a briefcase or, or something like that? <laughs> like those nuclear codes really aren't supposed to be like, hey, just able to just go anywhere, right? I mean, did you believe the idea that there were nukes that there were nuclear secrets or something like that in documents at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, it seems unlikely. You mean it's not an actual football? Well, yeah, no, it's not an actual football, Camelia. No, it's not. But I mean, the cognitive dissonance on display right there is the kind of thing that you see online, but you you rarely get to see it in person. I, you know, what's fascinating to me, and what's I, I'd love to hear from you on this. By the way, you can text the program at at five seven three three one nine one five eight six. So text the show at five seven three area code. Three one nine one five eight six, and uh, I might read your chats, your texts online. But um, you don't often get to see that kind of uh, cognitive dissonance played out in the media like that. I, I think Bill Maher is is becoming like as he's older, he's just naturally getting more conservative. It's almost like it's kind of like a natural thing. He really upsets a lot of people. I don't think people know what to do or how to react to him anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, well, it, it, what's funny is he's talking about he's getting these invites to he's being on Fox News. You know, they're having him in Fox News. And, and now he's not getting invited to go to like the left wing, you know, events and all that kind of stuff. They're not inviting him to be on like MSNBC and talk about that stuff anymore. Or, oh, yeah. You don't go on Fox News. I mean, that's just, you know. Persona non grata. Yeah, you give you up will. your uh, your 
liberal street cred if you do that. And then there was the Amy Klobuchar. Now, I didn't show that part of the clip where she, I didn't want to get you know struck. Fair use, fair use, copyright. <laughs> but um, uh, the uh, uh, Amy Klobuchar was after that, she's like, I don't know that all the media outlets are reporting it. I mean, the amount of, of uh, audacity that you have to have to be able to ignore a story of that magnitude uh, of the Hunter Biden story, like literally like crack and prostitutes. They think we're stupid. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Perfect. It's a perfect, perfect example. Speaking of thinking we're stupid in a few minutes here, we're going to talk about another uh, story and I'm looking forward to, uh, to talking about the whole concept of being an influencer because a poll came out that said that more children would rather be an influencer than be an astronaut. And I think that that's actually a fascinating topic. And for those who are watching the stream this morning, of course, you can see my uh, T-shirt here. You could probably guess where I'm going to come down on the side of the, <laughs> the influencer uh, question there. But um, uh, I'm curious to hear what Camelia Peterson has to say about it. And I'm really interested, of course, uh, to hear what you have to say about it. You can text us. What do you think about this poll about young people who want to be influencers versus astronauts? Send me a text, 573-319-1586. If you text the show this morning, uh, I might read your text on air. Again, it's 573-319-1586. And it looks like we might get a little bit of a, of a perk for where we operate here. Camelia, we just got our first text this morning. From another 573, guess what they said? They said, I work right next to the Missouri Times building where we are. Let me buy you and Camellia some Madisons. Yeah. No, you know, we, we're not politicians. We'll take a bribe. <laughs> Real. Uh, this morning, Andy Opperman is texting in. He says, good morning, Austin. It is really great to be hearing you again. Well, Andy, it's great to be hearing from you again. You can text us as well at 573-319-1586. It's kind of nice to be, it feels like we're getting the band back together, doesn't yes, it? Yes. And I will tell you what, I had a couple of ladies who own a local business here in Jefferson City call me last week. <laughs> and well, first of all, they were a little confused because they thought I was moving here. What? <laughs> but I think they thought like I was doing this all the time. I was like, no, you know, but I'll be there for the first day and, you know, still be a regular guest. But they had people coming in their shop asking about you and missing you on the air. And they were telling people about the new show coming up. They're very excited. Oh, see, there you go. Now, see, uh, there's all kinds of great stuff going on in Jefferson City with the uh, Wake Up America show. We've got so many friends of the show. We're so glad to have so many awesome supporters. One of the things that I really want to ask from our listeners and the people who enjoy this content right now is because now that I am no longer working for the man, that means that I also, that I don't get a quote unquote steady paycheck, which means that I am relying on the support of viewers like you to be able to uh, continue to do this. So what I would like to ask from you personally today is to get out your wallet right now while you're thinking about it, before you can think twice about it during the commercial break and go to wakeupamericashow.com slash support and sign up for a $17.76 a month pledge. Now, here's what we've got going on, which is kind of exciting this week to kick off the show. My friend, Doug, um, Doug Ashby, has given me a nice little gift to be able to give away to everybody. So this awesome sign that you see in the background of the show that says, Freedom is natural, tyranny is man-made, um, shall not be infringed with the awesome picture of the AR-15, which you can kind of see behind my head there, right there. We're going to do a giveaway today. And everybody who signs up to be a monthly sponsor or who joins our email list, you don't have to make a, a donation or become a monthly sponsor as well. Um, just sign up for our email list. Uh, and you can find that at AP for Liberty shop. Dot com. So if you go to AP, the number four, AP for Liberty shop, if somebody could type that into the stream, that'd be great. Um, at the top of the website of the 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 um, the shop for the show uh, is an email address. If you're already signed up for the email um, on AP for Liberty Shop, like my buddy Tanner Kemna, who just I see is texting in. Tanner Kemna checking in. Good morning, hey. Tanner. Um, all of our email people on the AP for Liberty Shop will be entered to win as well. So Taylor, you are already entered to win the drawing because I know you're an email list guy. But if you join us as a monthly donor um, at 
wakeupamericashow.com, then um, you will also be entered to win. So what I'm really asking for people to do is to become a Peterson's Patriot, and that is a $1,776 a month donation, $1,776 a month. Oh. No, no, that's not much pocket change. No, no, no. It's just uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, seventeen dollars and seventy six cents a month, and I'd be super grateful to have you um, as a supporter. And you will be entered to win the awesome wooden sign that's behind uh, my uh, desk here. Uh, listeners are texting in this morning at five seven three three one nine one five eight six. One of our listeners texting and saying, "Yo, how's it going, AP? Would like some discussion about the midterms and the impact of Trump." I'll tell you this, uh, Camelia. If they don't find something at, at Mar-a-Lago, I think he can get reelected. Your thoughts? Uh, you know, I have become- I'd hate for him. Oh. Yeah, come on can now. Do that? No, I mean, we're like, doing it. Can we just have Ron DeSantis or you no. know, something? Yes, I mean, yes. <laughs> yes, we can. I have been convinced that this is the Democrats' way to make sure that he runs because I think that they want to keep people talking about Trump because that okay. galvanizes their base. Okay, first of all, Camelia, I got to get you something over here. I got something from oh one of my, my lovely gosh. sponsors. <laughs> I need to get you something here for uh, for you. Camelia, I've got a hat. If you can hear this. So this is a nice little tinfoil hat, Camelia, for your conspiracy theory. I do need that. This is the way to get Donald Trump to run. This is QAnon speaking through trying to get Trump to run again. But let's be honest, Donald Trump, if he's if he's proven innocent, if they don't find something that they can, I mean, legitimately, he should have to be arrested for that kind of a raid. Like that's that's like a raid that they do on like a drug lord. You know what I mean? Right. And then they're going through Melania's panty drawer. And and they, I saw yesterday that Donald Trump was saying that they r riffled. Is riffled is a word, right? Rifled. Rifled is one is the, is definitely the word. But I think Donald Trump posted on Truth Social social. That they riffled? Come on, somebody Google this for us. Riffled, riffled. I know ruffled is, ruffles have ridges. Riffled. I wait, wait. know about riffled. It, riffled is a word. Okay. Turn over something, especially the pages of a book, quickly and casually. Okay, so that you can riffle through a through like a panty drawer or something like that. Okay, come on, grammar nerd. Are you are you checking it right now? I did. Yes. Okay, well, they say that Donald Trump said that they riffled through the... Uh, through the paper or through Baron Trump's so so sixteen year old son had to like have his stuff in the FBI raid. They had better find something. They had better find something there at Mar a Lago that is the that is the kind of offense that could actually do a perp walk and arrest him for. If they don't, in my mind, he runs again and he gets elected. Your take. You're not wrong. I mean that could definitely happen. Of course you're not wrong. Ruffled. <laughs> Rippled. <laughs> I can't use that word like that. that riffled, riffled. I riffled, don't know. Riffles I learned, have ruffles. I learned something new today. And Donald Trump used a word I didn't know. Oh, dude! <laughs> now you got to feel bad about yourself. Donald Trump used a vocab word, Camelia, that you didn't know. A listener texted in at five seven three three one nine one five eight six and said. Um, morning AP, congrats on the new show. Thank you so very much. We're grateful to have all of our supporters out there. You can text the show as well, again, at 573-319-1586. What I would suggest you do, if you, especially if you plan on being a regular listener to the show, is to do this. Program the number in your phone and just set it so that it says, wake up with Austin or wake up Austin or just say AP on there or something like that. Actually, do AP because then I'll pop to the top of your text list because... <laughs> Alphabetical order. Unless you got an art well, friend. And you should have like a favorites list. Yes. I can see in my favorites there you list. Go. In there this morning. Yeah, there you go. In case I need to text in, you yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. You want to text the show. Camelia, of course, is going to be on the program with her uh, twice a week. We'll have Camelia on Tuesdays and Thursdays from, you know, at eight o'clock on to whatever. And you're going to be in the Capitol a lot more, I guess. So you might be in studio a little bit more frequently. Yep. Hopefully I'll be around at least once a month and maybe more often. We'll see what happens. Great. Well, we're glad to have you. All right. Well, Camelia, we're going to go to our commercial break. And when we get back, we're going to talk about our next subject, which I don't have my piece of paper in front of me because I'm throwing stuff around. So look at your shirt. Look at, yeah. Oh, yeah. Influencer. Influencers. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll be back uh, after a word from our sponsors. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. 
Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. for our family. So we would love it if you could join us. I believe in liberty. And I believe in Austin's ability to spread the ideas of liberty. Do you? I want to ask you today to join Peterson's Patriots with a pledge of $17.76 a month. Help us to stay cancel proof so we can spread the message of limited government across the country. I join Peterson's Patriots myself just in a little different way. Visit wakeupamericashow.com slash support and make your pledge today. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul, made a big investment in chips just before Congress votes on a bill that would give $52 billion in subsidies and tax credits to the chip industry. Over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he received from you? No. And I believe... If you come to our border, you will be turned back. Do not come. Do not come. Have you ever oh, no. overseen, Senator, have you ever received a royalty playing. payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. Well, I well here's the thing is, why don't you let us know? back. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. It's time to rise in freedom. Uh, joining us in studio still, arch conspiracy theorist, Camelia Peterson with her tinfoil hat on. Nice. Nice, Camelia. Thanks so much for joining us. So, here. Glad to have you here. So why did we decide that you needed to wear your tinfoil hat now? Oh, for my conspiracy theory that the Democrats are doing all of these shenanigans just so that they can push Donald Trump into announcing before the midterms. I see. Now, that is definitely 
the lamest conspiracy theory I've ever heard. And, but it's because you know, it's totally believable, it's not, right? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, no. I, my see, my belief is is that they probably really just want to. They're, they want to try and prevent him from being able to run for president. They want him to essentially, they, they want to try and get him arrested. They want to, um, you know, they want to find something that they can use to, to indict him and to bring him up on charges and to be able to shut down his, his aspirations of a presidency. We'd love to hear from you about this. Send us a text this morning at 573 319 one five eight six. Whoa, we and we have heard a lot from our friends this morning. We've got a lot of text messages, Camilla. Uh, our listeners are texting in uh, from four one seven this morning down in Springfield, saying yeah. your friends at Turning Point, Missouri State, turning in tuning in this morning. It's Brett and Tucker. We got up in time, believe it or not. Good morning. Wow, that's a feat for Brett. I'm yeah, here to tell you. <laughs> good job, Brett. Yeah, thanks so much for tuning in this morning. Congrats on the new show. Excited to have you at MSU. Yeah, the, a lot of people don't know I'm going to be speaking at Missouri State University. Yep. On October the 27th. Yes. Uh, so if you want to see me speak live and in person, then you can tune into the show down there on October or you can on October 27th, come see me at Springfield in live and in person. It'll be a great event. I tried to get him to bring the dunk tank back for that, but uh, shut up. I think that <laughs> I'm pretty sure tickets are almost sold out. So you better get some soon. Just kidding. Um, but uh, thank you very much, Brett and uh, Tucker for tuning in this morning. Thank you. I'm really excited to speak and that's my alma mater. So I'm excited to speak at my own college. It's definitely an honor. Uh, another listener texted in this morning. We got you tuned in out of the shop at Cam a collision. Great. Glad to have you awesome. guys this morning. We love it. Uh, the Vanderfelts uh, out there are um, tuning in. Another listener texted in with their breakfast of peaches and apples and the show pulled up. Thank you so much. Oh, it's Doug. Thank you, Doug, for so much for tuning in. Another listener texted in and said, yeah, I met uh, John Marsh at the Canines in the Frontline event we went to earlier this year. I told him to tell you I'm a big fan. Not sure if he did. I like John. Seems like a great dude. John is an awesome dude. Yes. I definitely miss John. Wish he could be here with us. Um, Milsert Mike texted Texting in saying, congratulations on the show. I will say no more crazy set of genarians. Whether it's Biden, Trump, Hillary at all, we need younger blood in there. You're here. Yeah. If we can't get Rand Paul, then we need to be pushing DeSantis to the moon. To the moon. <laughs> Another listener, Dan Snow, says, hey, Austin, congrats on the show. Glad to follow you here on Trump. Correct me if I'm wrong. Communists have a tactic to look for evidence of wrongdoing to where our Constitution says innocence until proven guilty. I feel like it's the other way around. Great point, Dan. Glad to have you here. Another listener texted in, said, congrats on the new show. Excited for you all. Tony Allegra, who's also one of our donors and supporters. Tony, thank you so much for being a, a monthly supporter. Said, curious to hear AP's thoughts on Schedule F reclassification of federal employees that makes it more fireable by the president. Trump was pushing for that. You see, you see why it would be such a good idea to vote for Donald Trump. Because here's the thing. It would have been like, you know, it's like sending a missile into, I guess I shouldn't say the Pentagon. Don't say that. Um, it's just like <laughs> going to get shut down. Yeah, going to get shut started. down the street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like Donald Trump talked about if he goes back, he wants to reclassify federal employees so that they can be fired. He should have done this when he was in there before. He should have done this last time he was in there. But you know, if people voted for crazy and we didn't get crazy. We did. We got you know a fairly moderate President Trump, which actually he did some very libertarian things. So. I got to say, if Donald Trump runs again and wins a nomination, I know who I'm voting for, Camelia. How about you? Uh -huh. We will wait and see. Don't you wait and see me. What are you going to no, vote? No, I will not commit to that. Yes, you will. You will commit to it right here, right now. You will pledge on this show, on this show right now. Uh, another listener texted in this morning saying, Williams, Brett Jenning, Brian, much. Um, uh, let's see. And, oh, yeah, somebody texted and said, do you believe we should wield power rather than to be too scared to even do anything to change? I'm sort of becoming sympathetic to Michael Knowles' positions, controlling words, controlling minds. He thinks the GOP went soft embracing libertarian, law libertarian ideas. Um, you that's know, kind of that idea that, is that you should go right authoritarian in the name of liberty. I don't, that's, that's, that's dangerous. Well, that's why I texted the other day that the response to being called a Nazi is not to embrace the tenets of national socialism right. or, you know, ironically or otherwise, right? There's so like what I'm hearing from some of like my favorite gun pages, they're saying things like, well, communists don't believe in your right to own a gun. So you shouldn't believe in them and their, their right to own a gun. No, you know, people have rights, even if they disagree with you, you know? Sure. 
Yeah, I think that we, we've been getting to this point, especially, you know, as conservatives have, I mean, justifiably, you know, that they feel this way. And as far as, you know, when they're feeling the heat like this and your rights are being violated left and right. And so the reaction is to do the same, fight mm-hmm. fire with fire, so to speak, you know, and go authoritarian to reassert your principles and ideals. And that's... Ah, I mean, it's hard not to, it's hard not to agree with them when you hear things like this. We're going to go to our, tri- our Twitter weirdness here, back to Twitter. I want you to listen to this clip. It's hard to disagree with people like Michael Knowles when you hear things like this from MSNBC. Take a listen. Charles Jenkins has uh, an intro to his song War, uh, where he says, when the enemy is coming at you, you can't fall down. You can't break down. This means war. That is where we are. We are at war with these people. These folks are evil. They have allowed evil into their house with Donald Trump. He has now dominated the party. This evil is spreading. And when you are in a war footing, you have to respond accordingly. It's now that's that's MSME. This is evil is what they're saying. They're calling people like me because I I voted for Donald Trump. You know, we're evil. They're at war with us. Now, what you're at war, the laws of war are not the same as the laws of peace. There are things that you can get away with and do legitimately in war. I know libertarians don't like to hear this, but there are things that you got to do. There's some killing and some breaking that's got to get done. These people are actually declaring war on us. In some sense, in some sense, I would say, I won't say they necessarily have forfeited their rights, but if they believe they're at war, then to some extent they have surrendered their rights, their right to be alive, their right to own property, their right to, you know, to live in peace. And at this point in time, if they're at war with us, Camellia, then they're legitimizing any kind of a tactic that we can use up to and including, well, something that would get me demonetized. (laughs) Your response when you hear that. Well, I mean, it's the age old question, where do you draw your line? Mm -hmm. And Honestly, we are in a perpetual cycle of tribalism anymore. And, you know, I think that the rights uh, ideology is getting to be boiled down to resist the other side at all costs. Mm -hmm. Both sides are like that. It doesn't matter what the other side does. You have to push back whether it's, you know, (laughs) ridiculous or not. Right. But I mean, at some point, like, for example, I know that you got annoyed by all like the pushing back against like CRT and stuff in schools here in the state of Missouri. That was kind of like for a while you were sort of like, you know, this is a waste of time. It's like the kind of thing where, you know, it's not really going to make a big difference or anything like that. And I was... I disagreed with you and I thought that we should fight back against this woke nonsense because my view was is that, you know, they were going to force teaching communism to our children and they were going to forcefully indoctrinate our kids. I'd like to abolish public schools. Sure, I'd like to see us get rid of public schools. But if they're gonna if we're gonna have public schools, we should control them and we should teach kids not to hate their country and to respect their elders and to learn the constitution and to, you know, understand the bill of rights. Maybe, te- you know, we should teach firearms in school. We should give kids guns and teach them how to shoot guns, not so that they can kill people, but so that they can learn how to use them responsibly. Right. So that we wouldn't probably wouldn't have as many mass murders, you know? Sure. Well, and I think that the problem is, is that we become so fixated on all of these brush fires and we're, it's like whack-a-mole there, you know, CRT pops up, they're going to call it something else. I mean, they're, you just, you're playing whack-a-mole with all of these issues. And if we can't address those things and also focus on long-term solutions, it just, it's never ending. Yeah, no, I get you. I've got a, a text that I know you're going to love. You can text the show this morning too at 573-319-1586. Listen to this. You're going to love this. Do you think suburban women have too much power at the polls to prevent Trump from winning the general? So suburban women. Suburban women. He should say liberal suburban women, okay? Because you're not a suburban woman, are you? I am not a suburban woman. You're not in a suburb. No. Although no. you although you kind of now you split time I between. I guess I'm urban and rural now. I guess you are. You just kind of split your time between the two. Um, I mean, answer that question. Do you think suburban women have too much power at the polls to prevent Trump from winning in general? I don't know. Maybe. It's close. You know, Trump really um, alienated a lot of the moderate Republican base, and they're still there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, another listener, Andy Opperman texting again says the office of the president is already too powerful. Add the ability to fire federal employees might work fine with Trump as president, but you know, we have another Obama on the way sooner or later, but I mean, ah, that's always the question. What's but, the flip side? But here's the thing that, that is, that is the deep state, you know, that, you know, the inability to fire federal employees and the, the bureaucrats who stay there and who do what they want, regardless of who's in power, that is literally the definition of the deep state. So to me, I think that would probably be one of the best things if President Trump were to do that. It's it's called civil service reform. Well, actually, one of the most one of the more libertarian presidents from American history did this. If you'll Google him um, after the show, Chester A. Arthur was engaged. His his whole platform as president was civil service reform because he had come out of many of the corrupt how um, like political halls like what was it, the, these are the Tammany the age of Tammany Hall and things like that when like local mob like essentially mob bosses you know controlled the political parties and decided who were going to be the candidates rather than through democratic action so i mean you know civil service reform has a, a tradition in the united states and something and i think it's something that we definitely need to add um, Andy continued on and it's, uh, or one of our listeners texted and said, yes, Trump has to be able to fire federal employees. We can't clean house as needed without that. I definitely agree with you. You can text the show this morning at 573-319-1586. One listener texted in and said, we wouldn't have to be at war if they'd just leave us be and mind their own business. The left are the ones necessitating a fight. Quest here, by the way. Another listener said, yes, Trump has to be able to fire federal employees. We need to, we cannot clean house as needed without that. All right. So we're going to a commercial break. And when we get back, we will talk about the topic of that we had planned, which is uh, what do you do if your kid comes up to you and tells you that they want to be an influencer? We'll talk about that when we get back on the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients. And after an injury, I found myself as a patient. I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through supporting the coalition, you're supporting some of the veterans that have the biggest needs. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. If there was, so why don't we restart a game? Oops. I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients, and after an injury, I found myself as a patient. I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through supporting the coalition, you're supporting some of the veterans that have the biggest needs. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. If there wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would, who would get out there and who would be aggressive in it, if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I've fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. matter our lies to be encouraged instead of punished this is not our inheritance if truth no longer matters we will not remain free for long this is our generation's challenge to defend our founders hope that we the people could self-govern 
if we defend our right to get the facts. And right now, we're building the only defense a free people have, the facts on every politician, every position they held, every statement they've made, every vote they've made, and any cash they've taken. It's the real history on those now pandering for your vote. There are hundreds of young people building our defense right now, and they need your help. We all have our passions, but as our ancestors knew, when events become so foul they threaten us all, we must stand and defend each other. Please, have our backs. Join us at votesmart.org. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. As the world faces the challenges of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Lions recognize that kindness matters now more than ever. And Lions and Leos are finding ways to continue to serve our communities, including ordering food delivery for healthcare workers, holding story time for children online, and providing surgical masks to medical professionals and first responders. Empowering us to do more, Lions Club's International Foundation has provided nearly two and a half million dollars in grant funding for COVID-19 relief. And that support continues to grow. For more than 100 years, in times of need, Lions always find a way to help those around them. And after we emerge from this, we will be stronger than ever. Visit lionsclubs.org to learn more. Welcome back to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. Thank you so much to all the sponsors of the show who have provided us with these commercials. We're super grateful to have everybody here. Joining us now in studio for our final segment still is Camelia Peterson. Camelia, thanks for sticking around with us this first hour. Good morning. Yeah, Good to grateful be here. to have you here. All right, so let's talk about the subject. You know, why am I wearing this shirt that says influencer? I love this topic that popped up uh, about a week ago. And conservatives were sharing this one on all of their feeds, talking about, oh, of course, another sign of the degradation of humanity and society. Uh, which is that more young people are interested in becoming influencers than astronauts. Before I go off on my rant, um, let's hear from you. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's just part of the progression of humanity. I mean, this is where we are. Influencers are, are basically like today's advertisers. It's marketing. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. Who watches TV anymore? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot more people than watch this show, but you know, well, you know, you know but still, eventually. Well, yeah, eventually, yeah, exactly, yeah. So we're going to talk uh, about that here for just a couple of minutes. But I have this, uh, I have a couple of articles. One was uh, so that was a good news hook, but um, the the other articles that I thought were really interesting on this one is the question of first of all, how much do influencers earn? Which I think is in itself, I think is a pretty um, an interesting question here. I mean, if you only have like, you know, 300,000 followers or something like that, which is, you know, small in terms of like influencer status or what have you, how much can they earn? Well, Forbes, I think is underselling it at this point. Forbes reported that influencers who have at least 300,000 followers, and I don't have that. I have maybe like 150,000, like, you know, followers, but maybe like, you know, a thousand or 2000 hardcore people. But, um, you, they say that you can make $1,762 a month as an influencer if you have 300,000 followers. Now, that that must be just like from like one platform or something like that. Like it's just right. TikTok or something like that. Because if you have multiple platforms and you're multi-streaming, then oh, you, know, you can hopefully make more money than that. But um, if you are an influencer who has over a million fans, things start to get a little wild. There you're starting to make real money. You're making like 4000 
5,000. If you have like 3 million followers, then you're talking about, and a lot of these young people, they do have that many followers. They're making tens of thousands of dollars a month. So why would you not want to do something like that? I guess that the idea is, is like, well, it's noble to be an astronaut, but I mean, not everybody wants to risk their life and join the military and you know, sure. And I don't know that it's always been the case that every kid wants to be an astronaut or wants to right. be president. We shouldn't encourage that anyway. But, yeah. you know, I mean, it's it's this is like, you know, right. kids have always wanted to be, you know, a movie star right. or, you know, have their, uh, you know, be on a TV show or whatever. I think this is totally normal because this is this is kind of the, the next iteration of that. And. You know, I don't know how many people are going into uh, these things just want, I mean, yes, attention is a currency, mm -hmm. but most people that are going into this are doing it with an eye towards how can I monetize this? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that, you know, I, I don't see any problem with, with young people who wanting to be influential. Um, my wife and I, who's going to be joining us here in just a few minutes at 8.03, my beautiful wife, Stephanie Peterson, and I are going to talk about this and other subjects. Um, you know, we watch these travel influencers, one of our favorite, because we, we have like a dream trip we want to take. We want to go to Japan. And there's a guy who does these videos abroad in Japan, and he lives this incredible incredible lifestyle where he goes and he, he, he travels across Japan. He makes fun YouTube videos and he makes a lot of money. And he, and you know, there's people, we watch travel videos. We're going, we're going to go to the Florida Keys, uh, in October for a few days. And, um, and we, so we watch these influencers and their, their lifestyle videos of, you know, best things to do in the Florida Keys. I mean, Camelia, if you could get paid $3,000 a month or say to make videos about, you know, going to the Florida Keys or going to Egypt or doing all this kind of stuff. Would you do it or not? Well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a no-brainer, right? Well, you know, it's kind of funny because it's like you have this like anti-elitist sort of mindset, right, that's pervasive in society where it's like, you know, populism is, is pervasive. It's anti-elitism, right? So being an influencer is like considered to be like some kind of an elite kind of a deal, right? If you're not, if you're not, if, if you're not a member of the Republican Party and slapping together stuff and welding stuff together in a giant machinery factory, then you're not really a real American or something like that. This but is it's capitalism. Kind of, this is free market. Yeah. They are bringing, they are providing a service that is in demand. Exactly. People like it. They want more of it. Exactly. So, I mean, there's, yeah, this is. Exactly. We love capitalism, don't we, Camilla? That's right. Yeah. All right. And speaking of capitalism, I'm going to get, uh, we've got to get ready to go to break. And I have one of our first sponsors who I'm really excited to introduce everybody to, which I'm going to do for in just a moment. But I want to say, first of all, thank you to Camelia Peterson for coming on and being on the debut show. We're very grateful. Thank you for being a good friend. We're excited to have you here Tuesdays and Thursdays. It was awesome to have you here on the first show. I'm so excited for this and I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. Camelia Peterson, editor of the LibertarianRepublic.com. That's my website. Grateful to have you here. Send Camelia a thank you text, drop it in the chat, uh, or text us at 573 319 one five eight six. And now I get to introduce you to something I'm very excited. One of my first sponsors. If you saw Camelia wearing her tinfoil hat, that was courtesy of my good friends at Flip City Magazine, which if you can tune into the camera right now, you can see it right at the uh, on the stream. And basically, when I saw, I didn't know that they existed until about a um, month ago. They reached out to me randomly and they were like, hey, we would like to kind of like do like a promotional thing for you. And I saw and I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to love this because, first of all, it's weird as hell. And it's it's fun and it's funny and it's got magazines. And I when I was growing up, my favorite comic magazine to read was Cracked. Like everybody loved Mad Magazine, but I was always into Cracked. I always thought that they were a little bit more hip, a little bit more with it. But now I have a new favorite magazine, Flip City Magazine, which you can order at Flip City uh, dot Flip City Mag dot com. Uh, you know, what's going on sucks in the world. And the least that you can do is laugh uh, at it. You know, I feel like these, this, these people are really going places with this very Liberty oriented mag. It's got full color il industry uh, illustrations. They're 100% independent. Uh, you know, nothing else exists. That's like this. They're fighting the culture war with comedy and art. They're smart. They're flipping hilarious. You can buy Flip City Magazine 
in print today at flipcitymag.com. That's flipcitymag.com. Again, it's basically the cracked magazine for libertarians, and they are a great sponsor. Tell them that uh, I sent you, and check them out again at flipcitymag.com. If you make a purchase over there, get yourself a subscription and check it out. It's it's hilarious. It's fun. It's funny. It's just the kind of thing that the liberty movement, I think, needs. More cultural plays for people's hearts and minds, kind of like the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. We're going to go to commercial break. And when we get back, we will be here with my beautiful wife, Stephanie Peterson. We're going to talk to her about, <clears throat> da, 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 pull up your thing. Uh, Stephanie Peterson joins us to talk about how more employees are quiet quitting, as well as mental health and kids. Suicide and depression is up. Um, but one Missouri legislator is pushing to legalize small amounts of magic mushrooms, but should we really give those to kids? I know some libertarians would boo me for saying probably not, but maybe Stephanie has a different opinion and we'll fight like an old married couple, even though we're a new married couple at the wake up America show. We rise and where we rise in freedom every Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. We'll see you when we get back. Hello, my name is Kelvin. Welcome to Frenchy Bush. This is my Didi's website. Now I've decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever to tell you about how cool Frenchy Bush is. But I've decided that this is the perfect opportunity to share with you. Frenchy Bush is a good website. You should follow us on socials. If you like Frenchies or any kind of bulldogs, me and my new brother George are going to try to make your life more fun. Hello, I'm George. My neck isn't really thick yet, but it will be. We are so glad you're here. Please ignore my floating eyeball. It helps me spot predators who might be approaching from the sides. Dee Dee made Fringy bullshit to review things that he uses on me and my brother to tell you if it's good or bullshit. Take this collar, for example. Dee Dee really likes it. Dee Dee said it's really handy because us Fringies got thick necks. Need something real Really tough. People think Frenchies are little, but if you look at us from below, you can see we are really pretty buff. Mmm, beefcake. Yes. Look at my creamy thighs and chest. Yes. You like that? Big brother, please focus! Frenchy Bullshit. Please follow us for more great content and read the Frenchy Bullshit blog for more fun and cool stuff. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender hosts 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of people give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble, won't we? We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume again. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, you have any real world experience. it's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water. To disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. 
Make no mistake, reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. School district in Southwest Missouri has recently brought back corporal punishment as a means of disciplining their students. If parents choose to opt into the new policy, it permits certified personnel employed by the school district to spank their children with a paddle. The new policy requires that students be subjected to physical punishment in private, accompanied by a witness also employed by the school district, and prohibits hitting children in the head or face. One father who has two daughters enrolled in the school district in Missouri, ages eight and six, chose to opt into the new policy and says that he thinks it will make students stop and think before acting out. The Food and Drug Administration yesterday approved a new round of COVID-19 booster shots without human testing. Instead, FDA officials are relying on data from mouse trials to prove the safety and effectiveness of the vaccines. The White House has been pushing for a fall booster campaign to begin this month in September. And because of this short deadline, vaccine makers have only had time to test the reformulated shots in mice, not people. This will be the first round of boosters distributed without human trials, and first shots could be administered as soon as next week. The agency uses a similar approval process with flu shots, which are updated each year without human testing to keep up with mutating flu viruses and are generally 40 to 60 percent effective. Meanwhile, coronavirus cases and hospitalizations have both fallen steadily throughout the month of August. And according to recent data, an average of 400 to 500 people in the United States a day are dying because of COVID-19, an average that is far lower than at most points during the pandemic. Fewer than half of the people in the United States have received a single booster shot. morning. It's 8.07 Central Time here in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm Austin Peterson. Thanks for tuning in to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. It's time to rise in freedom. Thanks so much for tuning in here at wakeupamericashow.com. Now my next guest, I'm very excited to introduce to you a person who I love more than anything in the entire world is my beautiful wife, Stephanie Peterson. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. You are so welcome. This seems like a dream to be here. Seriously. It's been quite a bit of a process for us to get here and get this started, right? It really has. Honestly, though, my mind is going back to like back when I was a hospital social worker and dreaming of moving to Missouri to work for you. Oh, really? So what? And now here we are in studio together at the Missouri Times building, courtesy of my friend Scott Fawn. And we are streaming live together. We're married. We've got a wonderful life. Two little puppy dogs dogs. And, um, you know, we, we live a pretty exciting life, wouldn't you say? I tell you, dreams come true. I yeah. feel like I won the sweepstakes. Yeah, I'm kind of and now I'm living life as an influencer, no longer working for <laughs> somebody else. I'm working for myself. That's and right. you're working for yourself from home. You're a, a licensed social worker. You're a therapist. That's you right. With, I do telehealth. You do telehealth therapy. these days. And, and you know, therapy is is getting huge. Everybody the, nowadays I'm hearing is seeing ads for better help. Uh, and, you know, you're a therapist. For, I work for better help. Yeah, you work for no better plug. No plug, but uh, <laughs> but more and more people are are seeking out help for their mental health issues, and they're turning to people like yourself to to help them with their problems. Which is why I'm really excited to talk to Stephanie um, today on the show. In in this segment, we're going to talk about uh, the epidemic of quiet quitting. Um, more and more employees are doing the bare minimum at their job. We're going to talk to Stephanie about that. Yes. And then in the next segment, we'll talk about mental health. Uh, In kids, suicide and depression rates are going up. And this was something that was actually start had was starting before the pandemic. 
Um, Stephanie and I will be talking about that in a little bit more detail. And towards the end of the show, I was ta- I was reading yesterday up on some mental health issues. One Missouri legislator by the name of Tony Lavasco, uh-uh, who, who will be joining us on the program tomorrow, uh, unfortunately not in studio, uh, but uh, Tony will be joining us to talk about his legislation that would essentially decriminalize small amounts of psilocybin here in Missouri. Some of the initial research and studies that we're starting to see coming out of areas of the United States where it's legal is showing that veterans who have been struggling with PTSD have shown improvement in dealing with their issues uh, because of this, what appears to be a wonder drug, psychedelics. We're going to talk about Absolutely. that at the end of the program. Changes your mind. Right. But before we do, uh, Stephanie, let's talk a little bit about this quiet quitting. First of all, how do you define quiet quitting? What is this? Basically, not going above and beyond your job role and your pay grade okay. at work. So that so that's it. So just not doing doing the bare minimum in order to get by, the right? The bare minimum. And okay. apparently TikTokers, Instagram users, they're not being so quiet about this issue and they're making lots of videos about it. Some of them are kind of obnoxious. Mm-hmm. They're they're like pretending they're at work with their Starbucks coffee cup and they're like, oh, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go to this meeting right now. So some people are, are really taking it to an extreme, not bare minimum. They're actually doing like under the bare minimum at work. Yeah. What do you think about this? Send us a text 573-319-319. One five eight six. You can text the show at five seven three three one nine one five eight six. And I'll tell you this, Stephanie. I actually I found out about this push for quiet quitting about a month and a half ago or so. Yeah. And, and I was talking uh, about it. I, I found out it because like you know, unlike a lot of people, I read stuff that I don't agree with. So I, I subscribe to like you know anti work threads on reddit um because quite frankly what what i will find is with like socialists and people like that is that they will correctly identify a problem but they will almost always have the wrong solution so it's the solutions where we disagree yes all of the political parties right but i mean yeah so i mean when you find somebody who's reasonable they'll say okay yes i don't think that my opponents really hate children and want them all to starve to death but I'll tell you, I've been on interviews where the, somebody says, why do you hate hungry children? So there are plenty of people out there, Stephanie, who don't, you know, who aren't obviously thinking about things in, you know, reasonable terms. But, you know, nobody wants to see starving kids. Nobody wants to see people not being able to pay for their health insurance. We want more expanded access to good quality health care in this country. Absolutely. We, you know, it's just that, you know, p- typically people like myself don't believe that government is a solution. But, you know, are you seeing this trend of people doing the absolute bare minimum in their jobs? And if so, what do you attribute it to? Yeah. So so hustle culture. I, I know it's especially popular in like the marketing and advertising industries. It's where you work these long hours. You take calls on holidays, weekends. It's like you work your butt off and then you say to yourself, why? And so I think COVID really made people take a step back because they got to work from home and enjoy that lifestyle. And they're like, why do I have to go back to normal? Why can't I keep up with what COVID was having me do? Right. I you know it accelerated the work from home trend, which I think is honestly, it's healthy. I know a lot of employers complain about it. Not everybody can work from home, but it's, it's especially when gas prices were up over $5 a gallon. I mean, it's definitely a good good thing to save money. And, you know, you can build a healthier relationship with your kids, you know, your dogs, as we would know quite well. Yes. Yes. George and Kelvin love us. Yes, they do. It's nice to be able to do that. And if you can do it, I think it's a good thing. Um, You know, more technology is uh, definitely a good thing. All right. So I've got to go to a commercial break. But when we get back, we're going to talk about the disturbing trend of suicides and depression rates skyrocketing amongst children. It's something that we need to discuss. Thank goodness I have a professional here. My beautiful wife, Stephanie Peterson, will be Very back. Very professional. Yes, we will be back with more Stephanie Peterson to talk about that topic and more here on the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star fiber talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct, like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans 
are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. Peterson. This show has been a huge venture for our family, so we would love it if you could join us. I believe in liberty, and I believe in Austin's ability to spread the ideas of liberty. Do you? I want to ask you today to join Peterson's Patriots with a pledge of $17.76 a month. Help us to stay cancel-proof so we can spread the message of limited government across the country. I joined Peterson's Patriots myself, just in a little different way. Visit wakeupamericashow.com slash support and make your pledge today. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul, made a big investment in chips just before Congress votes on a bill that would give $52 billion in subsidies and tax credits to the chip industry. Over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he received from you? No. And I believe... If you come to our border, you will be turned back. Do not come. Do not come. Have you ever oh, no. overseen, Senator, have you ever received a royalty playing. payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. Well, I well here's the thing is, why don't you let us know? Time to rise in freedom. I'm Austin Peterson here for the Wake Up America show. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm still joined here in studio by my lovely wife, Stephanie Peterson. Stephanie. Hello, hello. Uh, Stephanie, you had a whole bunch of points that you had written down about quiet quitting, that point we were discussing. <laughs> I and, know the show know, goes so fast. I know, but what were some of the key points of things that you wanted to share before we move on to the next topic, would you say? All right. So instead of quiet quitting, there is also quiet firing. So managers are now fighting back about the quiet quitting employees, and they're like, okay, well, we're going to make your job so miserable that you're just going to want to leave. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, I see this as so passive. That was Mark Zuckerberg that like said that, wasn't it? It was like Zuckerberg came out and said, you know, we're going to step up the heat. We're going to make it more difficult. Sure. You might find out, find that this isn't the right place for you, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I find it so passive aggressive. You know what? Let's stop dancing around the bush. Let's stop being miserable here. And let's get assertive, not aggressive, but assertive. Say what you want and need. Tell people what are these problems that you see at work. Wasn't yeah, this give was like, solutions. This was like some deal yesterday. We were like this week, and you don't have to say exactly what it was, but it was kind of like you were having a conversation with someone, and it was like this kind of like really awkward moment, and you just decided to just say exactly what you felt about something. You know? Oh, I did. I did. Yes, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, it's like. Why do we have to make excuses and I feel like we got to beat around the bush? Why or right? exactly? Just right. be honest. Say yeah. what you want and need. And if your job isn't giving you what you want and need, then leave. Become you, an influencer. Yeah. What do you think about that? Send us a text at five seven three three one nine one five eight six. One listener texted in said, "Kudos on this new venture." Um, they were a volunteer campaign worker at the twenty sixteen Libertarian Party convention. Wow, this yeah. is OG. OG. Guys. They said Very OG. I was the one responsible for getting. Getting that hard-hitting Mary Madeline article about you into the hands of every delegate prior to the vote. Yes, I remember. If you ever run again, it would be my honor and privilege to serve again. That's thank you very much. That's very kind. You can text the plan. Uh, text us at 573-319-1586. Another listener texted and said, I think that employers use other duties as assigned as in quotes, he says, right. as a catch all to force employees to perform duties way out of their job scope. Exactly. I know. I've, yeah, I know I've been assigned plenty of tasks that I did not expect and probably wouldn't have applied if I'd known. Same here, man. Maybe quiet quitting is a rebellion against employers abusing their employees time. What do you think? Steph? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, employers are taking advantage of their employees and especially employees like me. Like I'll always remember when I was in seventh grade and my teacher gave me lunch duty every single day. And I remember my mom and I, we went to my teacher and said, why do you keep assigning me lunch duty? And he said, it's because you never say no. And it's like, you have to learn to say no, you can't be a yes man. I've always been a yes man and, and I'm not anymore. I have boundaries. Oh, Stephanie, tell us, right. about, tell us about your boundaries. Empowered, let's you hear, let's hear about your boundaries. Tell yes. us. Yeah. I, mean, I dare you to say no today at your job at least once. Good for you, Stephanie. That's exciting. That's right. to see. Yeah. Glad to have. <laughs> yeah. Leave, leave at your assigned leave time and say to yourself, you know what? I'm only human. I can only do so much. Yeah. Uh, one of our listeners texted in with a good question. They said, um, <clears throat> They said that they texted us at 573-319-1586. And they said, any interest in using alt platforms like Rumble and or Odyssey? Um, what? Like, saying something about the Rumble? Well, what's fascinating is actually if you go to rumble.com right now and you look up oh. AP for Liberty, oh. we're streaming live on Rumble right now too. Oh. Well, so we are on, we are live on Rumble. We are on. Uh, there's a Rumble on Rumble, you guys. There's a Rumble on Bumble on Rumble. We are a Rumble Bumble <laughs> Uh, we are on Rumble. We are on uh, uh, Twitch. We're on YouTube. YouTube we're on Facebook. Facebook. We're at wakeupamericashow.com. And soon we'll be adding Twitter and pretty much any platform that we can get our uh, message out on. So yeah. So if you're a fan of Rumble, check us out over at uh, rumble.com and uh, follow AP for Liberty over on Rumble because we're streaming live over on Rumble right now. So right. yeah, I see that there's one person watching now over on Rumble, which I think is me looking at the stream. So I <laughs> uh, might want to subscribe or follow me over there. So <laughs> you sure. have to be your number one fan. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's the thing. That's a good point. You know, you got to believe right. in yourself. You right? are your own best friend. Yep. You can text the show at 573-319-1586. One listener texted and said, work from home killed jobs. Most people are expendable. What do you think? Yes, people are expendable. I mean, we are doing more with less now. We're We're bringing robots into McDonald's and Walmarts to do the but job. But it's kind of like, remember when we talked about like people. the class projects and the whole like, you know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work or something like that. Right. You know, like it's, it's probably like that at most people's jobs, right? That like, you exactly. know, 20% of the people are doing, you know, 80% of the workload. So, I mean. Isn't that how it always is? Back when I was in college, I was just talking about this recently in group projects. Okay. We had a group of five people. I was the one doing most of the work. So again, we were doing more with with one you know one person my brother texted in this morning and said dehumanizing your countrymen is evil is one of the steps towards genocide yeah we were talking about that clip earlier that i was playing about um 
uh, from MSNBC calling Trump supporters evil. Um, another listener texted in this morning and said, um, said something that I've already read on air. Oh, good morning, Austin. This is your old friend, Forrest. Oh, Happy Forrest. to hear about your new Hello. show. She, he says, I dig Camellia's jeans. Reminds <laughs> me of the 1970s. For those of you who missed it, Camellia had her hippie her, jeans. Her hippie jeans today. Didn't we decide today that uh, Camellia is a confirmed hippie? She's an official hippie. Yeah. Hearing from my home, the 816 OG texted in saying this morning, uh, congrats on your new gig uh, from your friend. In the original live stream in 2016, Andy Maidman. Good morning, Andy. Thanks so much, very much. Another listener, Tony Allegra, one of our monthly supporters, said, curious to hear, uh, oh, he said, um, stream on Rumble seems more stable. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can text the show as well at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. So do us a favor, just program that into your phone. And uh, before uh, we move on to the next topic, I just want to do an appeal to our listeners right now who, if you're a big supporter and you can help us financially stay afloat, this is obviously a very uh, expensive activity. Very you know, much. You don't see the lights and cameras around us, but there's a lot of expensive equipment. We did have a lot of awesome donors step up, people like Tony Allegra, people like uh, Jen, uh, John Mashurik, and many others. Tolly Owens. Tolly Owens made donations and signed up to be monthly supporters. Yes. If you can join us as a monthly supporter, join Peterson's Patriots. For seventeen seventy six a month, and Stephanie, if you become a monthly supporter to the show, that's right. There are benefits. It's not like you're just you're not just throwing money out there and saying not getting anything back for it. If you support the show, then we've got a really nice incentive program, don't we? Exactly. So if you donate a hundred dollars, just a one time donation, we send you a special gift. If you become a monthly donor, we enter you into monthly prize drawings where we can send you a gift from our AP for Liberty shop. And we give you a super secret coupon code to use at the AP for Liberty shop. And uh, you can get discounts from here on out with that super secret code. Yeah. So uh, if you want to help the show and get benefits, you get a 20% discount off if you're a uh, a monthly supporter for the show. So you get a 20% off discount, which is a really good discount right. from the AP for Liberty shop website. And you might win free stuff. And you can win free stuff. Yeah. And we, we also have an incentive going on right now. So 1776 a month is what we're asking for. Yes. But, but there's more. But there's more because if you actually become an Action Jackson supporter with $20 a month, then we're going to give them a free keychain. That's right. We're going to send them a Tommy free gun key Tommy chain. gun Keychain, Zuckerberg. Don't zuck me. You know me. you need it. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna zuck me for saying Tommy Gun. Okay, it's not a gun giveaway. It's a free keychain giveaway. But that's if you become oh, a twenty dollar. Yes, it's, it's a toy. Yeah, it's a toy. Uh, but that's a twenty dollar a month supporter for the Action Jackson plan. But that's you right. still get entered into prize drawings if you're a seventeen seventy six a month. Um, yeah. So and um, to donate, you go to wakeupamericashow dot com slash support. Yes, wakeupamericashow dot com slash support. Um, glad to hear from you. Uh, one of our listeners says, uh, John Turner said, um, although my number is in P PA, I'm in Perlin, Texas, Houston suburb. John, glad to hear you. I hope you're enjoying Hello. your life down in, deep in the heart of Texas. Uh, another listener texted and said, by the way, this is an awesome unofficial birthday gift. Yesterday was my birthday. Happy birthday to you, brother. Thank you so much for watching the Wake Up America show. We're glad to have you as a supporter. Happy birthday to you for Sure. All right. So it's 827 uh, right now, which we've got a few more minutes before we go to the break. Uh, we do have some commercials coming up. Some awesome supporters have stepped up and yes. uh, joined us as commercial sponsors for the program. Uh, but coming up next on the program, we are going to discuss with Stephanie the question of the mental health crisis in kids. The suicide and depression rates are way up for young people. And I know what a lot of our listeners are probably thinking. They're probably saying, well, this is probably something related to the pandemic. It is. It's before the pandemic. Thing. Yeah, it was really starting before the pandemic. And of course, Stephanie, you are a, you know, a sort of mental health counselor. Is that how you might describe it? Or I'm a therapist, counselor. They all pretty much do the same thing. We, we do talk therapy. Yeah, talk therapy. So Stephanie is going to uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges that your kids are facing online and in real life. And we'll talk about that when we get back on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. We'll be back. I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients. And after an injury, I found myself as a patient. 
I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through supporting the coalition, you're supporting some of the veterans that have the biggest needs. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. If there wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would, who would get out there and who would be aggressive in it, if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I've fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. enough yet? Do facts no longer matter? Are lies to be encouraged instead of punished? This is not our inheritance. If truth no longer matters, we will not remain free for long. This is our generation's challenge, to defend our founders' hope that we the people could self-govern if we defend our right to get the facts. And right now, we're building the only defense a free people have, the facts on every politician every position they held, every statement they've made, every vote they've made, and any cash they've taken. It's the real history on those now pandering for your vote. There are hundreds of young people building our defense right now, and they need your help. We all have our passions, but as our ancestors knew, when events become so foul they threaten us all, we must stand and defend each other. Please, have our backs. Join us at votesmart.org. happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors, what would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. As the world faces the challenges of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Lions recognize that kindness matters now more than ever. And Lions and Leos are finding ways to continue to serve our communities, including ordering food delivery for healthcare workers, holding story time for children online, and providing surgical masks to medical professionals and first responders. Empowering us to do more, Lions Club's International Foundation has provided nearly two and a half million dollars in grant funding for COVID-19 relief. And that support continues to grow. For more than 100 years, in times of need, Lions always find a way to help those around them. And after we emerge from this, we will be stronger than ever. Visit lionsclubs.org to learn more.
Thanks so much for tuning in to the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. I'm Austin Peterson, and we are joined in studio still with my lovely wife, Stephanie Peterson. Stephanie, good to see you. Hello. You can text the show this morning at 573-319-1586. And one of our listeners did just that when we were talking about quiet quitting and that statistic we talked about where, yes. you know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Right. It says, uh, one listener texted and said, on Steph's comment, where 20% of the workers do half the work, it's called Price's Square Root Law. Mm -hmm. where the square root of the number of people in that group do half the production. So I gotcha. guess we'll need to look that up. Uh, anyways, but moving on to the next topic, uh, Stephanie, this is something that I saw was quite disturbing. I and mean, this is something that I think, you know, especially parents who have kids who are listening right now or want to uh, want to hear about is something of a mental health crisis with suicide rates among young people and depression, rates of depression in young people are going way up. Let's talk about this. Yeah. So according to the CDC, there are rising rates of suicide, depression, self-harm, and anxiety among adolescents. And the number of teenage girls who have been suicidal has increased 50% nationwide since 2019. And so there's a lot of visits to the emergency departments because apparently the waits to get in to talk to a therapist can be 48 days or longer. Some people are saying months. Some people are saying it takes them a year to get to a psychiatrist. So it's like there's just not enough help out there. So, you know, if you have like a parent who like, well, how can, how can you like recognize these signs? Because a lot of times, you know, teenagers, I guess, are not very communicative. Communicative. Absolutely. Yeah. So there are some telltale signs of mental health issues in kids. So we have low self-esteem. If you see that your kid is, you know, slouching their shoulders and, you know, just speaking bad about themselves, negative self-talk, that's an indication. Negative mood. They just seem kind of down, not really smiling much. Problems at school, if their grades are suffering or if they're having attendance issues, loss of interest in activities. So if they no longer like to go to the mall with you on Saturday, mm -hmm. that's a sign. Drug and alcohol use, they can use that to self-medicate when they're not being medicated appropriately. Now, in terms of like the, um, you know, the, the causes of something like this, I mean, this was going up before the, uh, before the pandemic, but the pandemic didn't help. Correct. The pandemic basically was the perfect storm for mental health. It isolated you. And, and so basically anyone who was depressed, they're already isolating themselves and then they're further isolated in quarantine. So it was just horrible. And then anxious people, they're anxious to go back out into the community and, and talk to people because they haven't been practicing their social skills. But yes, this has been going on before the pandemic. And I would say it's because of social media and the internet. Okay, so that's a pretty big, big claim there. But uh, what do you think? How how do you think that contributes? Yes. Well, kids have more and more access to the internet nowadays than we did back in the day, and so they see more negative issues. You know, back in the day, I, I don't remember really watching the news that much. I just watched but, the O.J. Simpson trial, you know. <laughs> right. We remember certain things, but not day to day. So that's why kids are just so worried about like climate change and, you know, gun laws, things like that. It's like they're more involved because they see it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. It's right in their face now. And two, with social media, I mean, bullying is just everywhere. And kids are comparing themselves to each other you know, the models on Instagram. So low self-esteem is so prevalent. One of the things that just blew my mind, and you know, I've reported on this before, is this, this um, you know, how susceptible, especially young people are. I mean, everybody's susceptible to, you know, I, you might call it a form of brainwashing, but you'd see these young people who are on TikTok and they're watching other people who have tics yes. or who have autism or who have um, Tourette's. Yes, we and, have watched those, and, and they'll start and they're to really dis believable. And they'll start to dis. Well, you'll they'll have fakers, but you'll also have young people who will actually like, since these are mental Ill illnesses, they can spread almost like an actual virus. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. I mean it's it's trendy to have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's almost like you're an outcast when you don't have some sort of diagnosis right. when you go to school. Kathy Jo Loy sent me a personal text this morning, and she says. <laughs> Par yes, parents need to get control of their young child's social media. It's a huge factor. By the way, it's the parents' role, not the government's. Thank you, Kathy Jo Lowe. That's right. And, and the other thing, too, is parents are extra accommodating nowadays. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're almost overly coddling their children. So if a child is anxious, for example, 
they don't let their kid face their fears. They say, no, no, stay here at home. It's okay. Because it's seen as insensitive if you push your child to do anything they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Kathy, by the way, thank you for being a monthly supporter of the show. Yes, We're grateful thank to have you, you, Kathy. We love you. We appreciate you. Hope you enjoy your uh, awesome toy that we sent you uh, from the shop. The I think we sent her the a cool Buddha. Ronald Reagan Buddha. Yes. She got a Ronald Reagan Buddha, which was really cool. And she has a... a Come back with a warrant doormat. Yeah, she did. She got to check that. Check out the AP for Liberty shop website for sure to check it so you can get like Kathy. And she even has a pillow cover. Yeah, she does. She's one of our best customers. So <laughs> thank you, Kathy. Biggest supporters. We're grateful to have you, Kathy, very much. Thank you very much. Um, so on this topic, though, in terms of like mental health, you know, we don't have kids yet. Correct. Yet. But, uh, you know, that's the goal. And I mean, so the question is going to be that the delicate balance and maybe Kathy or one of our other listeners can text us at 573-319-1586. Text us your thoughts. But how do you sort of like walk the line between, you know, not overly coddling your kids to also making sure that they're not on social media developing Tourette's, you know? Correct. How do you, how do you do that? Just having honest, open conversations, warning your kids about the dangers of the internet. I mean, if there's a will, there's a way, you know, parental controls exist, but I feel like kids are going to find a way to access information. But I don't think like, because when you and I were growing up, the internet was literally the wild west. Anything oh, goes. It was anarchy. Oh it, yeah. And I mean, in some ways it was beautiful, but in other ways it was. I was definitely in adult chat rooms. That's for sure. It was damaging. Right? Yes. It, it definitely yes. not the kind of experience that I want my kids to have. But, yeah. you know, I tell this story and I think I might have, have told this before. And, you know, this is going to maybe people be like, well, that's why you're so messed up, Austin. But <laughs> I saw this video. I remember, I'll never forget. Do you know what a snuff film is? No. What is that? So it's basically a film like a cartel will make them or something like that where they will like torture and then murder someone on camera oh my gosh and they're be gruesome it's totally gruesome and i'll say i will never forget seeing that video when i was in college and it shocked me so much you were an adult at the time even. i was an adult all right mm -hmm. and imagine a kid seeing something like mm -hmm. that right so so i remember seeing that and shocking my court. Now, maybe I'm just justifying here, you know, and, you know, maybe our listeners can text us at 573-319-1586. Tell me if you, if you think this is just me justifying it, but like, it's like war. So I would watch, well, they call it war porn now, right. but uh, I would watch videos of war, real videos of war. And in real videos of war, when the Russians and the Chechens are fighting, the Chechens will capture Russian sh soldiers, take a knife and murder them you know like just stab them in the throat and i'll I, I i have these images still in my mind right almost as if i was there and i'll tell you again maybe this is me justifying but i would rather know evil yeah in the world i would rather see it and know that it exists maybe not everybody has to or something like that but i feel like for me it fills me with resolve Right. That the, when you see this evil in the world, it's, do something about it. It's like, remember WikiLeaks? Yes. Remember when Julian Assange released the tape with Edward, was it Snowden? Not Snowden. It was um, well, the, uh, Brad, uh, Bradley Manning, now Chelsea Manning. Okay. You know what yes. I'm talking about? I know that name. The, it was uh, Collateral Murder was okay. the video. And it showed a U.S. helicopter pirate, pilot gunning down reporters with cameras, he thought the cameras were RPGs. He thought they were weapons, but they were. Turns out they were just reporters. Okay. And I, you know, that changed the world, right? Yes. So it was a good thing that, at least in my mind, you know, a lot of people are like, no, that needs to be declassified forever, you know. But I mean, I think that the public deserves to know it. Not everybody has to see it, and but it probably some people it traumatizes them, right, Steph? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think some people are more sensitive to those things than others. Um, but I think just as a parent, again, it is the parent's job. So limit your child's exposure um, to technology. Send them outside. Make them play like old school. Yeah. You know, get them in the habit of doing that. Don't just throw them an iPad at the age of one year old and, and have them work the entire thing on their own. But you can like see why, you know, again, and we're not parents. So we, you know, I know people are going to be like, pshaw. Right, right. But, iPads are not bad. But you I can, mean, you know, it's okay to give them to your kids sometimes. Like, like, shut up. I'm trying to work, you know, or something like that, right? <laughs> I wish there was an iPad for dogs, you know, we could give yes. them sometimes. One of our listeners texted in at 573-319-1586. 
and said, where would we submit suggestions for guests um, and forward contact info for consideration? You can actually send it here to this text line that you're texting me on right now because that's secure. Nobody else has access to it. Again, the text line is 573-319-1586. Um, we'd be glad to take your show suggestions over there. Uh, appreciate I just want to give some, some little resources, though, for any parents who do have children that are suffering from mental health disorders. Try some telehealth platforms. Talkspace and BetterHelp, they do service teens mm -hmm. who are seeking counseling. And so try those websites if you're uh, finding long lines uh, to get into a psychiatrist or psych psychologist locally. And also dial 988, which is the Suicide and Crisis Hotline. Make sure that, that your teenagers know that number if they are ever in trouble. They yeah. can always call it. Our buddy Jack Stocker, who helped us get uh, some of the show prep ready for it, uh, texted in at 573-319-1586. He says, even under my rock, I catch constant Ukrainian war footage these days. You know, so it's definitely something that maybe we can explore a little bit more. But, you know, one of the things that happens to a lot of people in war is PTSD. And we're definitely going to talk about that here in just a couple of minutes when we get back from our commercial break. Sarah Jane texted in at 573 319 one five eight six. She says, Sarah Jane here watching on YouTube. Hey, Sarah, good morning. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Hope you upload shorter stuff there regularly too. Yeah, for sure. Little clips. Yeah. So the goal is, is that we're going to take some of the best of from the program and clip it and post it on socials as well. So you'll be able to get little snippets from the broadcast as well. The little teasers. Yes. The little teasers. Yeah. Uh, another listener texted in and said, Hefner was into snuff films, they say. Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner. Hefner. De definitely. He was into a lot of things. He was into a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the FCC can't get us here on social media. We're free. <laughs> Unless, of course, the gods of social media want to take us down. But you can make us cancel proof for a small donation of $17.76 a month. Join us at the wakeupamericashow.com website. Go over to the support page and join us today by becoming a $17.76 a month sponsor. We'll be super grateful for that. We're going to go to a commercial break. And when we get back, we will talk to Stephanie Peterson for the very last segment. Boy, the show just flew by. I know. I, I don't know. want it to be over. I know. But we've got more shows every Monday through Friday, right? Plenty more programming to go. We'll be right back on the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson at wakeupamericashow.com. Hello. My name is Kelvin. Welcome to Frenchy Bullshit. This is my Didi's website. Now, I've decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever to tell you about how cool Frenchy Bullshit is. But I've decided... That that this is the perfect opportunity to share with you. Frenchy Bush is a good website. You should follow us on socials. If you like Frenchies or any kind of bulldogs, me and my new brother George are going to try to make your life more fun. Hello, I'm George. My neck isn't really thick yet, but it will be. We are so glad you're here. Please ignore my floating eyeball. It helps me spot predators who might be approaching from the sides. Dee Dee made Frenchy Bush to review things that he uses on me and my brother to tell you if it's good or bullshit. Take this collar, for example. Didi really likes it. Didi said it's really handy because us Frenchies got thick necks. Need something really tough. People think Frenchies are little, but if you look at us from below, you can see we are really pretty buff. Mmm, beefcake. Yes. Look at my creamy thighs and chest. Yes. You like that? Big brother, please focus. Frenchy Bush. Please follow us for more great content and read the Frenchy Bush blog for more fun and cool stuff. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender holds 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of 
people give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble, Lolly. We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume again. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, I mean, real world experience. it's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water. To disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Make no mistake, reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Wake Up America Show with Austin Peterson at wakeupamericashow.com. Ten more minutes to go on our world premiere of our show. And I got to say, Steffi, seems like it's going pretty good. Are y'all woke yet? No, no, they're awake, but they're not woke, right? <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us here on the show. And thank you so much to the people who signed up to become a member of Peterson's Patriots. John Combus oh, joined some us. subscribers already during the show. Yeah. Liz Fanning Press stepped up as well for a monthly donation. Support of seventeen seventy six a month. So did our friend Cecilia. So thank you so yes. much, Cecilia. We'll be sending you all the super secret coupon code. Yes, you will be getting your coupon code for 20% off the AP for Liberty shop. And thank you very much. Also, for everybody who signs up and becomes a monthly supporter, you'll automatically be entered in to the drawing to win this awesome sign behind my head that says uh, freedom is natural, tyranny is man-made and you can also sign up for that for free uh, just by sending us your email. At and that sign is man-made. That, that sign cool? is man-made. Yeah, at ap4libertyshop.com at the top of the site. Send us your email. If you don't want to become my monthly donor, you can do it for free just by signing up with your email over at apforlibertyshop.com. So, yes. all right. So 10 minutes left to go. I thought that the, that the commercial that was playing during there was perfect timing here because we're going to talk a little bit about mental health. There is a legislator, Tony Lavasco, state representative from Missouri. He's actually going to be on the program with us tomorrow. Very cool. Uh, and he'll be here with us, not in studio, but over the video live stream, courtesy of Jack Stalker, who hooked us up with the hookups and his buddy Noah. Um, but veterans and mental health, um, he's been trying to get this bill passed in Missouri, and it's Missouri for God's sake, so it may not happen. But I mean, you know, it definitely is a good conversation to have about psilocybin, which is being yes. tested on people who have PTSD. Um, essentially, it's magic mushrooms, right? This is what we're talking about yes. here, right? Psilocybin is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms. Right. And so there's a lot of research that's starting to be done. And so in particular, just recently, there was research about alcohol use disorder and so two doses of psilocybin, along with psychotherapy, helped people reduce drinking for at least eight months from this recent study. An alcohol reduction. So it helped them with their... Their alcohol use, so like they're addicted to alcohol. And this is so interesting. Like these people are literally having like hallucinations while they're on the psil psilocybin. And so this one guy says that 
He had hallucinations that he was being cut with a sword, scaling a mountain, and then he saw a disintegrating bottle of alcohol in the desert. And he said that these hallucinations actually lessened his cravings, and now he doesn't have them anymore. So, And he's kind of tried like rehab. He's alcohol, tried everything. The alcohol and, will terrify you. You'll never yes, want to drink and, it again. And here's the thing. The greater the mystical experience, the greater the therapeutic change. So the mystical experience is like that oneness, that, that spirit spiritual intervention that you have okay. while you're on hallucinogens? Well, not that I would know. but uh, Right. I have <laughs> no idea what this feels like. Of course not. But uh, uh, Stephanie, the idea that you, know, you could treat people with this, I mean, it's probably not really popular all that popular just yet politically. It's it's not popular. And unfortunately, it really hasn't been tested much because of the laws and regulations. And so that's why people like Tony Lavasco, I really applaud him for trying to change, change the laws on this matter, because then we can study these topics more and, and hopefully help people who have PTSD and, and different mental health disorders. Yeah, I'm really excited to have Tony on the show tomorrow. We'll ask him about Absolutely. that and more. Missouri special session is going to come up. This is the Wake Up America show, and we are going to be focusing a lot more on national issues, and we'll talk about fun stuff, silly stuff, comedy topics, and things like that. But because, of course, we are in the capital here at Jefferson City, a lot of the program will involve people who are from uh, the Missouri legislature, but I'll, of course, have them talk about national issues as well, just so that we can reach the broadest possible audience here. Um, but I just want to say again, thank you so very much to everyone who helped make this launch a success. Everything seems to have been going very well. Just yes. a few little technical glitches here and there and things that need to get worked out, but we'll definitely get all that stuff uh, fixed up. A lot of people stepped up to help make this happen. Stephanie, you've been a huge help. I love you so much. Uh, you're an incredible wife. Uh, Camelia, who's over there th uh, her, with her moral support and for hooking us up with connections. Jack, with his technical help, we're super grateful to have you here. Jack, thank you very much for everything. Um, my dad, for his moral support and love and and, uh, and trust and faith in me. I sincerely appreciate you. I've had a lot, I made a lot of friends in the last decade of people who have helped me in my fight for limited government. I made a dedication of my life to spread the ideas of economic freedom and personal liberty. Those who know me well know what I'm all about. They know that although I have firm principles and a solid backbone, that I still have an open mind. And I hope to bring these positive qualities that you see in me and have supported me over the years to this program. And we'll run for as long as you support it, as long as we have friends that believe in the same things that we believe in, the same kind of America that we believe in, an America that is free, that is centered around the ideas of individualism, that is opposed to forced collectivism. The thing that, to me, makes America great, the thing that makes America truly exceptional in my mind, is that America, in, in America, the individual is above the collective. In other countries like China and Venezuela and Cuba and other places, the individual serves the collective. The state is above the people. But here in the United States, as long as we have courage, as long as we're willing to accept the responsibilities and the dangers of liberty, we will remain free. In my speech coming up at my alma mater at Missouri State University on October 27th, the title of the speech is going to be The Price of Liberty. And in it, I'm going to examine the price that is paid, not just by soldiers, not just by police or firefighters, the price of liberty, but the price of liberty that is paid by people just like you and just like me. Stephanie Peterson, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. You did a wonderful job. We're, we'll definitely have you back for mental health issues. Is there anything that you want to plug before we go? Just go to wakeupamericashow.com slash support and, and help support this show. I'm, I'm so excited. I mean, even though I'm a therapist for my day job, this is my side hustle and I love it. Yeah. If you order something from the apforlibertyshop.com website, Stephanie, you're the one who ships it out, aren't you? Yes, I write a personal little note, and you might even get a lock of my hair stuck in the tape. Yeah, there, but that's because it's all over everything. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely check that out. Become a monthly supporter. Join Pet Peterson's Patriots at $17.76 a month so that you can help us to remain cancel-proof. If you have guest suggestions or topics, you can definitely text those in anytime at 573 319 
1586. Now we're going to go to our final commercial break of the day. You don't want to miss it because these sponsors that have stepped up right now uh, are also helping us to make a great program. We're super grateful to them and to you for being a viewer of the Wake Up America show. It's time every day, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 uh, a.m. here Central Time to Rise and Freedom. freedom. Rise and Freedom, baby. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Woo! We did it. We got a great show. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. bright and early. But whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work. But when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing. The Templar Knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar Knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first, however, and then order it online, and then it chooses you. The Templar Knife comes in a variety of shapes. As a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire. Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com. That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com.
I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. It is better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets, and new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right.